Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Waves from Slidenerd here. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to work out a simple example that demonstrates four things. Internal cache, external cache, external storage with private files and external storage with public files. We've already discussed the concepts behind each of these things in our earlier videos. So here, let's try to get this example up and running. So what I have here is Eclipse I have my activity underscore main dot xml let's go to its graphical layout try to see what it has it simply says enter your username you're gonna put something and we have four five different buttons first one is gonna store that username to the internal cache external cache external private files and as an external public file and this next button is gonna simply take you to our activity underscore second dot xml which if you go and check in our graphical layout it simply loads the data and put that data inside this edit text over here so here again we have four buttons five buttons load from internal cache external cache load external private load external public and so on so the main idea is very simple there is a piece of data that you want to try storing in different places and that's exactly what we are going to do here when you click previous over here it's going to go back to our activity underscore main that is our main activity dot java so now let's see how we can write code for this in an efficient and optimal way. So if you go to main activity.java, I've already some on click attributes and they are calling these methods save internal cache, external cache, private file, public. And there's the next method which of course starts up an intent and fires the other activity using that intent. Alright folks, it's time to save our data to a cache file and see how that works. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a reference to that directory where I want to create the cache file. In our case, it's get cache dir. This method is going to give us a file object that represents a folder which is nothing but the cache of your app. So this file folder is get cache dir will give you the cache folder for your app. So here, I'm going to simply create another file by saying file my file is new file and that file should be created inside the folder the name of the file should be my data onetxt now we'll have four different files out here for the four different storage methods just so that we guys can see how those storage methods work now at this point my file object has created everything that we need to do so now let's try and actually write data I'm gonna say file output stream for writing data create a file output stream object make it now initially I will use this to state initialization of this file output stream object now you guys are probably wondering why let me show you why file output stream is new file output stream create a file output stream from the my file object now the reason is we want to write inside this file my data onetxt and hence we put that over here that is my file and that will create a file output stream at this point there is an error just control F control 1 surround with try catch and we are pretty much done so just in case this file is not found or something then this exception file not found exception will be thrown and hence we need to put a try catch statement before you try to get access to the data so here I'm gonna simply say file output stream dot write so we need to write data and as you guys notice there are three methods each of them takes some form of byte data type so the first one is a byte array second one takes a single byte third one takes a byte array with a starting position and ending position but the problem is what we want to write is in the form of a string let me show you where it is it's inside our edit text if you guys remember so we need to get the data I'm gonna say string data is edit text dot get text is gonna give me the editable object I'm gonna say to string and this is gonna give me the data inside this edit text when this method is called so inside this I'm gonna say right over here and what we need is a byte array so convert the string to a byte array by saying get bytes and that is pretty simple so at this point there's again another error it says unhandled exception now while writing there may be a problem like your device shuts down or something goes wrong so we need to handle that exception by saying so add a catch clause to the surrounding try so there's an IO exception and there's a file not found exception and ultimately when we are finished writing what I want to do is close the file output stream because the file output stream is like a pipe in your house you want to keep the tap on you're gonna waste water so use it only as long as you need it so here 
Now finally, I'm gonna go there and try to finally statement. This will execute whether or not there is an exception over here. So inside this place, I'm gonna say file output stream dot close, and that takes care of everything. But there's a small problem. Remember, we said file output stream equals to null over here. So here at this statement, if there is an exception, then that object file output stream may not be initialized, and hence calling close on that is gonna be like calling close on a null object and that is an exception in Java so you want to ensure that you check that by saying if file output stream not equals null then only call that method otherwise do not call that method that is our basic trick here again there's gonna be an exception here so control 1 surround with try catch there may be an exception even while closing the connection which if you ask me sounds pretty weird to me so here try catch and that is pretty much done so at the bottom of this we can directly write a message by saying message over here and inside this message I will say one thing I need to tell you guys and that is that we are gonna pretty much repeat this everywhere for these three methods save external cache save private external file save public external file and the go a good developer never repeats stuff that is one of the biggest rules you have in programming so let's try to make a private method that avoids the repetition I'm gonna say private void write data something like this and this method inside this I'm gonna have these things right from the file output stream till the finally clause ends over here control X and paste it inside this write data method and here I'm gonna ask two things one is gonna be the name of the file that I wanna write second is gonna be the string message or the data that I wanna write inside the file as you guys notice everything is in place now file my file string data and here all I gotta do now is say write data pass the my file object the string data that you want to write and we are done and we can repeat the same thing for all these methods just copy paste it for the external cache over here here in this case we remember string data is the same thing that comes from the edit text but the folder here changes it's not get cache dir you want to store it to the cache folder of your SD card for that you use the method get external cache dir and that takes care of everything here I will name the file as data2.txt and that will show us the difference between the other files same thing for the private file here I'm gonna just copy paste everything remove this statement and here what I'm gonna do is call get external files dir for storing private files on SD card here it is asking me a type and what I'm gonna do is pass a custom type here and that is gonna be called slide nerd in other words what will happen is there will be a folder called slide nerd that will be private to your app inside that folder slide nerd there would be a file called my data one soups my data three dot txt and that takes care of everything and last but not the least save public external file over here gain the same thing this time what I'm gonna do is remove the statement I'm gonna say environment dot get external storage public directory here what I wanna do is pass the name of a folder or a public folder inside which this file is gonna be created and that is gonna be environment dot directory alarms downloads you can select any one you want I will take downloads for now inside this downloads folder there will be a my data for txt which will contain all the data that we want to have so at this point everything looks great let's try to actually run this and as you guys notice by making this method a single method that deals only with the file output stream I have reduced a whole lot of code in all these four methods and that's exactly what app development or in other words programming is all about you want to keep things as short as possible so let me run this using our normal emulator now the reason I'm not using any Jenny motion or custom emulators is because they will not let me go through the DDMS perspective and explore the different directories so here just select this click run at the top so at this point our app is up and running enter the username I'll say something like webs let's say internal cache say waves was returned to this data data slide node waves cache my data one external cache again it says waves returned successfully to storage SD card Android data whatever it was external private and there again you will see a toast that says return to storage SD card so now let's try external public and it says waves was returned successfully to storage SD card download my data 4.txt so all the files have been returned successfully let's go into DDMS perspective and let me show you each of these files where they are located on our storage card so let me minimize the emulator go to DDMS perspective slide nerd dot and here if you guys notice there's a data folder inside which there's another data 
if you go here find our process which is slidenote.wibs and there inside that there's a cache folder here and there you see that's my data onetxt now if I will show you the contents of this file let me pull this out select this file here click pull a file from the device at the top let me save it inside my music folder here just save it over there let me open it so there is my my data onetxt if you open that it has the text waves just what we wrote right so that means it's working perfectly let's go back and see the other files where they are in DDMS so here this was our internal cache so what about the external files that we had so if you go here to storage SD card and if you go down all the way to download here is my my data 4.txt which contains the file that we just wrote through our external storage. now this is a public file on the external storage let's try to find out where our private file is located and as you guys notice I expand further to storage SD card Android data there's a cache folder now this cache is on the external storage so here I have my file which is my data 2.txt and then there is the slide note folder which I custom created when I tried to store private data on external storage and there is my my data 3.txt now notice the difference between private file on external storage and public file on external storage the private file can be created inside a custom folder that I want but the public file always goes inside one of these predefined folders like music notifications pictures and that is all we had to discuss as far as writing data to our different storage uh, areas is concerned so in the next video we're gonna try to read the data from all these folders and that will complete our simple app and that will also give you the power you need to write data to different places in Android so hopefully you guys understood something out of this video if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment box below I'll catch you guys in the next video where we talk about how to read data from these different places in the meantime thanks for watching have a nice day